Okay, so a lot of people were asking about what the mechanics were in the Epic of Alexander when I'm streaming about it and all that. And I figured it'd be good for people to get an overview of the fight without going super in-depth into strats and all that, just because a lot of the endgame guides all go into super big detail, outline strats and all that. Whereas, all you really need to know to understand the fight is what's going on. And if it wasn't already obvious, this is going to be an unscripted bit. Whereas, usually my videos are scripted. So, uh, yeah, let's just go through the fight and give an overview of what all is going on. I'm going to use my, uh, the first clear we did of the fight. The link will be in the description if you want to watch the fight itself without me pausing and putting my second layer of voice over it. But, let's go. Alright, so, as usual, you just start out. Not much going on to start. We can do it, though. I guess we, we got this. I just need to, you know, keep my head on my shoulders. <laughs> keep my camera oriented. We just can't be burning stuff on Alex. Alright, so finally we get into Cascade. This starts a big raid wide that's going to split his HP in half immediately and give the other half to the hand. We cannot kill just living liquid. The hand doesn't matter. That can be alive at the end of all this. We only have to kill living liquid. But, as we'll see soon, you can't just attack Living Liquid. Cascade also spawned three puddles that we'll get into in a second. Actually, no, I'll explain that now. So, each of these three puddles with the tornadoes is going to do two conal AoEs. One of them, the first one will be a telegraphed one that will... So, if someone's standing here where my mouse is, it will be a telegraphed AoE starting from the tornado towards them and out infinitely in the direction that it's pointing. So if it's pointing towards the middle, basically all of this area is going to get hit by that conal AoE. And then after that first telegraphed AoE will be a second one that is not telegraphed and is guaranteed to hit whoever is closest to the puddle. So the person will stand here, telegraph an AoE, move out, move in, and then get a second AoE. All three of the puddles will be doing something like that. Alright, but we can move on for now. So I see people moving out to see heroes over here preparing for that. Jez over here is preparing for his, so... Right there. The hand has turned into a fist. This is hand of prayer and parting. Depending on where the hand and living liquid are to start, the hand will change forms. If they're far apart to start, the hand will change into an open palm and you will have to bring them together. If the fist is, if they start close and it turns into a fist, you have to drag them apart. So by leaving both bosses center, we force it to turn into a fist and then spread them out to handle prayer and parting. Now, there will be four Jagged Dolls that spawn. You cannot kill them. The first person to attack a Jagged Doll will tether to them, and it will follow them and attack them. And it will be up to that person mostly to damage it. You can't kill it, but you do need to weaken it. So there I grab, grab it, get the tether. And it did a tank buster there. Both bosses do a tank buster there. And you just saw that explosion. Let me go over that again. So watch, I'm going to get the boss. And then all four of the dolls will do a small AoE around them that gives a debuff. If you get hit by two or more dolls, you will instantly explode into an AoE as big as this and kill anyone hit. Which, you don't want to be dying. But basically it's get hit by two of these at once, you instantly explode. And you pretty much wipe the raid. And you could also see here in the left, the hand is casting 
Hand of Pain. This is why you need to keep the bosses together in HP. If the two bosses are more than 5% HP apart at any given time when Hand of Pain is cast, the raid will instantly wipe. So that's why we have to keep them close in HP and just keep attacking both. I don't know how I'm not dead. So I'm going to weaken the hand, the, my doll. And so now I've gotten my doll to about 25% HP. If you kill the doll, it will wipe the raid. If you feed the doll into the hand, it will explode. However, if you get the doll below 25% HP and then feed it into the hand or the boss, or the tornadoes, not that you'd ever do that, it will explode doing raid-wide damage, but not kill everyone. So if you kill it, it kills everyone. If you feed it too early, it k kills everyone. And you could also see now here in this tornado, there's an orb. Based on the positions of each of the bosses, the hand and the living liquid, these balls called embolus will randomly pick one of the two bosses. So this orb I think is going towards l the hand here. It will start moving in this direction until it reaches the wall and then disappear. And it's completely based on the positions of the bosses. If this ball touches either of the bosses or any of the players, it will explode and kill everyone. So we have the boss here and he's going to move it up just to dodge that. And you can see here, I fed my doll, it was below 25%. I took a lot of damage because two dolls exploded because there's four of them. There was another cleave there. And then we bring the bosses together for the next mechanic. So this is the next set of protean waves. That's what the tornadoes were doing, protean waves. So this first one is guided at everyone. So you see that there's a lot of different AoEs. There's one AoE pointed at each and every one of us. So we stack together to point them all north. Then we spread out. Hold on. Alright, that moment. So, at the moment the second set of protean waves goes out, a, there will be five protean waves. One directly north, so up this way, and then one at each of four players. So we got one person here. Behind all the effects, there's another person. There's me, and then there's another person here. But there will also be four sluice puddles that will target the four furthest away players. So we have to dodge those, get those out of the way. And then there will be another set of protein waves that attack the four closest people. They do a lot of damage, and you can't take two at once, so everyone has to take a wave. Then here, randomly two of the puddles, will t the tornadoes I guess, will tether the tanks for very heavy tank busters. There's another hand of pain here as well. And the boss will be doing some raid-wide damage. That hurts a lot. But basically, this is just the free DPS section before the next major mechanic. There's Hand of Pain. We're in 5%. Cascade. Okay, this Cascade. Where's the debuffs? Oh, huh, they're not on the thing. Oh, there they are. Okay, so. They just appeared now. Six people here all have in the party list a buff that you could also see on my bar down here called Throttle. If you do not Asuna this, you instantly die. And then this is going to be a repeat of the first mechanic basically, combined with so the, the Tornado Protean Waves and the Boss Protean Waves at the same time. So here, the boss is going to cast his things north. This is boss protein wave. We go out to bait those. And then also... There you go. There's the tornado slu uh, protein waves. The first set, or the second set of boss protein waves that always hit. There's the third set of boss protein waves, including the one going north. 
And then there's the tornado ones. Then there's going to be nice. another nice hand of prayer and parting. That you have to drag it away or keep it close and drag it away. Perfect. And then we're in the final hand of pain. There are two hand of pains in a row. And the boss is doing raid wide damage. We'll do a cleave and then it's a rage. And that's all of living liquid. And then here is the first limit cut. So everyone gets a number from 1 to 8. That determines the order of who gets hit. One will get hit with a frontal cone AoE, and the other will get hit with a line AoE. Additionally, there will be these exploding on the outside. They rotate clockwise, and it will do four explosions on the outside. So one, two, three, four. Then explode the middle, and then do another set. One, two, three, four explode the middle, and then that's the limit cut. So let's see it in action. So I will be the third person to get hit here. So four, stop, middle explosion, frontal cone, boss dashes backwards for the line AoE. Here comes again, frontal cone, line AoE towards and you can only get hit by one of those each. If you get hit by two, you die. So that starts with a big AoE at once. Some free DPS here while we position them. Whirlwind's just AoE. And then we have Judgment Nisi. So, I have this B hammer above my head. This is a Nisi. It's a dot that does some damage. And we need to keep these. We can't just let them fall off. We need to keep these for later. You can also see the buff on my bar here. Touching anyone else will instantly pass the Nisi. And if you touch someone with another color Nisi, you will both die. So there are four Nisi colors. I have one of them. And then the other three DPS have one. So there's orange, purple, green, and blue. So if I touch any of the other DPS, we will both instantly die. And then here's Link Up. Link Up is... Can we see them? No. When we walk out, we'll see them. There we go. So you couldn't really see it until this point, but Link Up causes two chakrams to appear that will home in onto the position you were standing when the cast went off so we were all standing in the middle so the chakrams went towards the middle because it picked two random people and went in the direction of those two random people or it might have even both went at the same person but either way it chooses the targets oh and yeah let me go back a bit because we're going to see cruise chaser cast optical sight Much like the Chakrams, this is based on your position. So every player gets one of these that will explode in a big AoE. Don't stand in that. And then here is Photon, which is going to drop everyone's HP to 1. Bam, everyone went to 1 HP. And remember, Nisi is a dot, so I'm actually taking damage here. So we need a shield to survive this. And the Nisi timers are starting to run down, so we have to pass them around this area. Additionally, I didn't I missed it, but let me go back a little bit. Right. Right here, one person gets a water buff. And you can see here, yeah, here. Nuptop got the water debuff. You can see the water icon here, and a lightning debuff here. So let's forward and back up, so pass up. Here is where the Nisis are going to fall off, the water debuff is going to explode, and the lightning debuff is going to explode. So Kiro here is the lightning debuff. So there's the lightning. If you do not have at least one other person standing in the lightning puddle when it explodes, it will explode again, wiping the raid. So you have to pass that debuff to one other person. 
And then the water is also similar, that you have to have at least one other person to pass to. However, it does a lot more damage, but it does less because it's a stack marker the more people you have. So you have a bunch of people stacking water to soak damage, and it will randomly pass to one of those people. And then it will also leave behind a tornado here. If you stand too close to this tornado, it will tether to you and kill you instantly. If it doesn't kill you, you get knocked back like half the arena. So if you manage to survive, you'll probably end up getting pushed into someone with a Nisi and get killed. And now Brute here is doing Missile Command. You won't be able to see it, but off in the distance on the right side of the minimap are people baiting a pair of puddles that will target the two furthest people away from Brute Justice with two sets of puddles. So it will target the two furthest people away with the first set of puddles, and then a second set of puddles will be baited by the two furthest people away, which can be different people if the first two people move in too close. You won't be able to see that just because it's off screen. Nice. There, you could kind of see some of the puddle. That's the second one. This second set is mines that someone has to stand in after they land to eat them and explode them because if they stay in the arena too long they will explode on their own wiping the raid. Additionally you can't really see it but one of the two tanks got an ice puddle that once placed will put down an ice AoE circle and then it will expand to be even bigger. And what you want to do with this is freeze this tornado behind Brute, uh, Brute Justice. Because if you don't freeze the tornado, it will then also explode anyway. Because the tornado is also on a timer that if you just don't do anything with it, it will explode. And finally, we have these other circles. These are uh, enumeration. The enumeration are always three people. You need three people in the circle when it explodes, or it will explode killing everyone in the circle if there isn't three. And you can't have four either. If there's four people in the circle, all, all four of them will die. If there's two people, both of them die. If there's one person, just that person dies. So you could see, oh, you could see the ice circle there. He places it, runs off to eat the mines. The second Nisi passes here because the timers are about to run out again. Lightning in five. You could hear him calling out the second Three. lightning explosion. Two. So there was the lightning explosion. This person, I forget who it is. Oh, it's Nuptub got the lightning. And the heat, the everyone else is down in the south of the arena taking a second water debuff. There you can see the tornado. Now here's Flare Thrower. This exists purely to hit this tornado to get rid of it. Oh, also, Cruise Chaser here is doing Limit Cut, which will put a shield on him that you can only hit from the front. If you try to hit from any other direction, it won't do damage. And if you don't break that shield, it's a wipe. Additionally, through all that, we all got a judgment buff, so instead of just the one, I have this three marker, this B, and another B. The, f the middle one here is the timer that says what my Nisi buff is. This one on the left is what Nisi buff I need at the end of all this. So here you have to pass your Nisi to the person who doesn't have a Nisi currently, and so... Da -da -da. Who needs orange? Orange is Shim, so he needs the orange buff. So you, I have to pass to him. I have no other choice, but I have to pass to the person who needs this buff at the moment. So Flare goes off, limit cuts happening off screen. They go kill the shield. Shield dies. Water dies. We all pass our buffs. If I had to pass to him, or it would be a wipe. Raid-wide damage, just to say, hey, damage. And then he is going to be one last lightning and one last water. 
like that. I tried to be in and failed. And then we have to prepare the Nisi line. At this point, everyone needs to get an Nisi. Everyone needs the correct Nisi. So me and Shimmer stack because we both need brown. And then here, Cruz is preparing Propeller Wind. Anyone hit by this will be confused. If they even survive, they take a lot of damage. If they survive, they become confused and will instantly kill anyone they attack. So basically, if you get hit by Propeller Wind, it's a wipe. However, the ice block we made earlier blocks Propeller Wind. So we all hide in a line behind it just to dodge it. And then Gavel is checking to make sure you all have your correct Nisi buff. And then here it's just do damage. Cruise Chaser is doing Photon, which is going to lower only the tanks to 1 HP. And Brute Justice is going to do Double Rocket Punch, with his, which is a tank stack that does a lot of damage. You just saw Shim like lose half his health from Max. And then Super Jump is always going to target the furthest away player. So someone went and baited. He jumps all the way out there. He then turns around and does Apocalyptic Ray, which also targets the furthest away player. So once again, furthest away, and then furthest away again. And then at this point, it's just DPS until the Enrage. And then here's where things are actually going to start to get really complicated, if it doesn't already seem complicated enough. And also, you have to kill both of them at the same time, I didn't mention that. Just like Living Liquid and hand the Hand. However... If you kill one of the bots early, the other will start doing an Enrage cast. The Enrage cast that you see at the very last second there, it will start doing it early. So you have to kill them both at the same time, and not just one of them. They both have to die. So, here, there are two sets of tethers. The blue one is a get far away from each other tether. The green one is a get close to each other tether. And then there's people with lightning debuffs. Like here you see in the top left, Kiro has a lightning debuff. This is Plaint of Surety, I think. And it will do heavy damage to the person and give them a vulnerability up. Meaning they can't get hit by anything else. Additionally, Brute Justice here is going to do two flare throwers at the two closest people. And Cruise Chaser here is going to do his conal, his limit cuts at the three closest people. So two people need to take this, three people need to take this, and not hit anyone else. So here, I'm going to come over here nope. I'm committing. and take one of the cruise chaser. And then also he freezes time so that you can't adjust mid-mechanic. So basically everyone takes a lot of damage except for the tanks because tanks... And here's the first burst phase. This is going to last about 30 seconds. It starts with a a chastening heat, which is a huge tank buster. Which he just got one shot because he didn't mitigate it. And then there's going to be three sets of divine spears, which are frontal cone AoEs. He just used uh, living dead just to go through the whole thing. So basically, there's just a DPS phase. And then here is Inception. So, there is going to be, in each of the Cardinals is going to be a thing. Over here is Brute Justice to uh, the west. To the north, which would be A in the bottom right of the screen, would be Alexander. Off screen here in the bottom left is Cruise Chaser. And then up here is Shinoa the Cat. You can... Uh... Yep, there she is. There's Shinoa. So, also, four orbs will spawn and tether to four people. If you do not get hit by this, it will explode. But you also can't get hit by it immediately because while it's big, it will explode and wipe the raid. You also can't explode two orbs next to each other because if the puddles they leave behind are touching, those puddles explode and wipe the raid. Now here, we have four judgment crystals here that we have to place. The placement specifically we do doesn't matter. What matters is, as I was jumping away, 
you saw Shinoa start doing a like horn that spawns the uh well here first you could see the orbs got smaller before the people hit them that makes it that you could survive them and they leave behind a puddle that is slow to walk through i'm gonna try and turn around i think okay now so the true heart here is caused by the heart spawning Shinoa spawns a heart from the opposite side of the arena that will slowly walk towards Alexander, and if it gets to him, will buff him a ton. However, the judgment crystals we left behind, if the... We can't have them too close, because like the green bubbles, if they're too close, they explode. But if the heart runs into the circles of the judgment crystals, the judgment crystals will explode, give the heart a vulnerability down buff, and if it gets four stacks, it becomes the true heart, which we need the true heart. The crystals exploding are also uh, how close you are based, proximity based, so we have to get far away from them to do less damage. If we stand too close, we just die. But all four exploded, and then we run over to Brute because he does three flamethrowers at the closest people. So one at that tank, one at that tank, one at us. There's three... And then here we could see the true heart. We cannot kill this because full for vulnerability downs. And then there's also more buffs that go out here. As you can see, there's another far tether that these two people need to be far apart. There is here. I have a shared sentence, which is a stack AoE. And then there's also people with the lightning, the plaintiff surety again, that basically can't get anything else or they die. So, Alexander is now invisible. Watch where the true heart goes. Bam. This is where Alexander is. That is the only reason we know where Alexander is, is because the heart went here. And additionally, it dog. explodes and gives us a little buff here on the left of the icon called uh, Enigma Codex. Enigma Codex won't come into play for a while. And that's why we needed to see Alexander, because big raid wide. Now here, two things are going to happen at once. Brute Justice is, cap is casting Super Jump, which again is targeting the furthest away player, who's going to be that. And then Cruise Chaser is going to attack the three closest players. The people who did not have Shared Sentence or Plaint of Surety have to take this. So both healers and the DPS who had the Far Tether. That is uh, non-negotiable. It has to be the two healers. And the third DP and the DPS who had the, the tether. And then here's another, the same exact DPS phase. It's going to start with a chastening heat. And then three divine spears. I think our goal here is 42 to be clearable, but we're way ahead of that. So here, wormhole formation. I'm going to go over this one step at a time. Cruise Chaser just ca li cast Limit Cut. So remember Limit Cut was... This is going to be the one from immediately after Living Liquid, where we each get a dot, and it's going to attack us in that order. One will be even... or odds will be a frontal cone... And the line AoE will go after even numbers. So one frontal cone, two dash at them in a line, three frontal cone. And it also, the knockbacks, there are knockbacks to all of these. So the frontal cone is always going to knock you forward. And the line AoE, if you are not looking towards Cruise Chaser when you get hit with the, the dash, it will knock you back and kill you. So here there's going to be Brute Justice is doing Link Up, which, as before, summons two Chakrams at the edge of the arena. So here we go. Chakrams, I am one. And I, know, I said that we get knocked back by these, so we have to use our arm's length as the odd numbers, or we'll get knocked into the wall and die. Additionally, while all of this is happening, Brute Justice is doing a Super Jump, so... I'm in the top left of the arena, 
Brute Justice is over here in the top right, and he's going to jump at this person in the bottom left. So he's going to super jump, and then he's going to turn around and target the furthest person away, like during Brute Justice Cruise Chaser phase, and do Apocalyptic Ray, which is a huge cone. So I'm going to arm's length to not get knocked back, walk out of the way. Additionally, so he's turning around to do Apocalyptic Ray, Alex is doing a, a sacrament, which is going to destroy the entire front of the arena, and basically this corner and the other corner. And there's these giant puddles. These will explode three times. So we have to have three sets of people, and there's two of them. There's one on the other side of the arena as well. And there, so one's going to be top right, one will be top left, or bottom left. It could also be, well I guess it's, technically it's bottom left and top right at the moment according to the minimap, and then the, the other pattern is top left and bottom right. Brute Justice and Cruise Chaser can also be on either side differently. But anyway, uh, these will explode three times. We need people to be standing in them to, when they explode, to take the damage. If nobody is standing in the puddle when it explodes, it will wipe the raid. So I'm going to rewind this just so you can see it all happen at once. Since that's all the mechanics going on at once, but there's a lot of mechanics. You see, you eight on the middle already. Now here is uh. I don't know what it's called, but it's a stack marker that's going to do incinerating heat. And Brute here is also doing something. He's doing a missile command, which is actually enumeration. So we have to get mid to stack to take the chastening heat damage, which is the moment I unpause is going to like knock us all to like 1 HP, basically. And then have people go into the enumerations, and only three people per enumeration, just like before. So two people are going to come join me in my enumeration, three people are going to be over here, and the other two people are just going to be not in it. So, chastening heat damage really destroyed us. And here is the final burst phase. However, instead of chastening heat, we have Mega Holy, which hurts like just as much as incinerating heat. Look how much it did. And he does two of them. We also have, uh, T uh not TBN, Blackest Knight. Not Blackest Knight, uh, whatever it's called that Dark Knight uses to reduce damage by 10% in addition to shield, so there was a lot. And now that was the Enraged cast. He is now Enraged. Boom! He, he jumps down, does a lot of damage. And you can see there is Tethers. These are connected to Alexander, who is off in the distance at the north of the map. We have to kill both of them before we even try to kill Alexander. Uh, let's just go one second further. So, Cruise Chaser is using his Enrage again, Eternal Darkness. This is going to finish first. If we do not kill Cruise Chaser before this ends, Raid Wipes. Additionally, Brute Justice over here is doing Fire Tornadoes, J-Waves, that will do more and more damage every time. Every time he does a J-Wave, he gets a damage up stack. So we're going to J-Wave, damage up, J-Wave, damage up. J wave and this is going to keep going until we kill him or he kills us so here we go he, huge dps rush you can see that the j waves aren't doing that much damage maybe like a quarter of our health at most okay this is a third of our health now okay a third of health now it's doing half three seconds until shake should be up for this one Maybe not. Now it's doing more than half. On five. Now it's doing a huge lots, but we kill him. And at this point, it's just DPS Alex down. We have tons of time. He's not even halfway through his cast bar. We use like all of our big damage for that one. But I, I, I'm not even attacking here because we're that far ahead. Let this drain out all the way because I need. 
I am not gonna have divination unless we completely drain this. Yeah, see, she just said she needs divination. But that's how far ahead we are that I just... I stopped attacking until that point just to make sure we kill it. I'm good. I'm good. And then here is why I don't limit break anywhere. Or we don't limit break anywhere else. We need tank limit break to survive this because tank limit break is an 80% damage down. And that's our HP afterwards. I just need at least 5 seconds left in my trans- or 10 seconds of my trans so I can use it there. I'm going two GCDs tether hero. I don't know if that's gonna affect you at all. Just because I don't want to miss any. And you could hear see hear us discussing strategies and what we're gonna do because I should have two more card draws. We're like we're progging in rage at this point, so we need just like one percent of damage more than we have, and we clear. Which you know this is a clear already, but still, I don't know how I targeted Jim there. Oh, you could target people while, while doing this. Oh, you can! <laughs> <laughs> Not nice. gonna matter, cause I can't click but big long transformation sequence to give you a short break before the final push. This DPS check is actually really tight. There we go. So the first thing he's going to do is... Come on. Auto attack. There you go, the first word, or the final word, that is. So, two random people will get things called beacons. Uh, you can see here, the white mage, Nubtup, has this icon. This is the light beacon, and I think it's Shim here has the dark beacon. The beacons will attract or repel, depending on which buff it is. So, I have dark, and I'm going to be repelled by the dark beacon. The light beacon is going to attract all the light beacon uh, paired people, so the bard, the summoner, and the dark knight all are going to be attracted to the light beacon. And here is the final word not only gave us those, but now he's doing ordained motion. Ordained motion is like acceleration bomb, but the reverse. We have to be moving when this goes off or anyone attached will die. Additionally, if either of the beacon player di players die, so if the white mage or the warrior die to this, all players of that color will die. So if the dark beacon dies, all other three dark people instantly die. But we're not gonna do that, we're actually gonna survive. So we're moving. Ordained motion missed because we were moving. So that first one, instead of motion, could have been ordained stillness. It could be either order, it could be motion stillness, or it could be stillness motion. Stillness is acceleration bomb. Stand still, don't do anything, don't even auto attack or you die. Then he's going to do two things in a random order. It could be either order, just like those. It could be stack markers, like we have here, into spread, which is going to be next. Or it could be spread into stack marks. At least I think it can be either order. But then we have a short DPS phase here. Here is where we need Enigma Codex. Fate Projection Alpha. That's probably the coolest mechanic. We all have clones now. We could also see Alexander on the edges of the arena. If we did not have Enigma Codex... All of these Alexanders would be invisible, and we would not have our clones. So that is why we needed the true heart back in the Alexander phase. So now I'm going to follow my clone because a whole bunch of stuff is going to go off. So first is there's going to be a motion or stillness randomly. We got motion first. I'm not going to explain these explosions yet. There's another motion, so we got motion, motion. It could be motion, stillness, stillness, motion, stillness, stillness, but we got motion, motion. And now we're going to see three Alexanders shoot rays, but only three of them. So this one didn't shoot a ray, so we're going to stand over it this way. Oh, no, it was the other one that didn't. But so, based on what those three Alexanders did, we have to move to be opposite of the one that's up north here, because... 
all other places in the arena are going to get exploded. So you saw a big explosion at one point in that, which was uh, defamation. That person is standing off in the edge because we can't be hit by this. And then there was also a stack marker shared sentence. A bunch of people didn't get any debuffs. And then three people got plaint of surety that they stand over on the right. That's the electrical debuff that's going to explode. Yeah. Motion. And see, you can see the Alexander. So there's the stack. There's the plaints. The three lasers. And this is going to start with a tank buster. This is a shared tank buster, so they stand together to share the damage. Nope. Hero, here comes a tether. Yep, they, and then it's going to be a second tank buster, I think it's only one. But it's there's a vuln up on the person, the people who took the thing. I think you could share that too, but... Yeah, here. He has a debuff up. So it's two tank busters in a row. Tank buster that they share, and then one that they don't because we just invuln through it. And then we have Pre Fate Projection Beta, which is similar to the Alpha. But it's also a lot different. So once again, there's three Alexanders now, and we have clones. We're gonna follow our clones to see what we have. So, once again, we have beacons. There's going to be a dark beacon, a light beacon, and everyone else has buffs that attract or repel. There's also a tether that you have to keep the two people apart. And there's also going to be another shared sentence that people have to stack together in all of this. And, oh, you can see two of the... They all jumped... So the clones jumped at people. Stack. Okay, here. That, this is what I was waiting for. So this guy, the other clones jumped, but this guy waited and did these two orbs. This is, so before when we had the stack and spread, if you notice that he did these orbs, if he has two orbs, it means there's going to be two stack markers. If he does a lot of tiny orbs, it means we have to spread. So you have to watch him to know what to do. Dark person who goes north didn't pay attention. And then, oh, so that clone that went south exploded into a big ring AOE that the only safe spot is under him. So we know we have to watch him to see where the safe spot is at the end of all of this. And it's a lot at once you have to watch. And also, they are super jumps, so they're baited by the people who are furthest away from the clones. So we have people that are specifically baiting each of the clones to the same positions. So here comes all the, the beacons and all, the far tether. I'm too close to the wall, I should be close further up. There's the guy doing the stack markers. And we run south. Get all in under that. Alright, and here is the final push. He is not going to leave the arena again. He once again does another ordained capital punishment, which is the shared tank buster followed by a second tank buster. However, Yukari took the both of them by himself because Living Dead is really good. And then here comes Almighty Judgment, which we'll call Trine, just for a shortening. So there's going to be three sets of Trine, so, oops, I mean, I want to try and get that, so. There are set patterns for all of this. It's pretty much always going to be look like this, but like rotated, basically. I think there's two, other, there's another set of patterns, but this is where they're going to be the first explosions are in these circles. This is going to be the second set of explosions. And then here's the third set. So we have to, ooh, excuse me, we have to dodge all three of these explosions. So we have to dodge these, the ones that was here, and then the one that was here. So we just go three to one. That's easiest. 
And then at the end of all this is Irresistible Grace, which, watch our HP, we have shields, and we're dead. Here's another ordained capital punishment, shared st stacks and all that. So they share it. And then they share this one again. Actually, no, I think he took that one by himself. I forget. Don't worry, I'll be back. Summon Alexander happened in the background, and here's another almighty judgment. So they another set of trines. One, two, three. And then here comes the explosions. Shake is up. One, two, three. Irresistible Grace explodes on us and does a ton of damage. And then that's it. That's that was the end. This is the final enrage push. At this point, it is just do DPS. Temporal interference. Look how much HP he has that we just have to push through. There is one thing to this though: is there are circles around him that will. Start starting in the top right and going around in a circle. They will come down and freeze the person in it. They are now jailed. If this lands and nobody's in the circle, wipe. I know, I was doing so the last imprisoning time. each of us one at a time. Oh my they go. We got it. We got it. We got it. I'm super excited. I was, I was extremely hyped for all this. Most of us are, and there you go. And that is the Epic of Alexander Ultimate. Explained as best as I could for a newbie level, at least. Once again, the, the clear without me constantly pausing and talking over it will be in the, in the, in the description. And may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. Break from this tomorrow. Let's go. I'm so happy, oh. son. I, I'm oh gonna cry God, again dude. like I did last time. <laughs> I gotta cry again. <laughs> I gotta cry again. <laughs>